Hey guys, I realized I hadn't finished this other video. I got to, I did a video on this, uh, a couple of them where I put a battery maintainer in it, and I did um, um, uh, just an overview of it when I got it brand new. It's hanging in there. I've only got several hundred miles on it. I hadn't drove it a lot because I got busy with other things and I was still doing some work. But biggest thing I want to show you is I added this uh, bed cover. It's kind of neat. Works pretty good. It's a company. It's a Retrax. And uh, so far, so good. Push this button, pop it up, slide it forward, and uh, and it slides by hand. And it rolls up, stops. You can push this down and lock it in place. I think there's other videos around Retrax videos. And you put it down, seal it up. I had a, a roll top on my other F-150 than the, uh, before my other F-150. And the other F-150, my last one that I got rid of that uh, just sold... Um, I think I got some videos of it when I went out to Moab, but uh, it had a um, uh, uh, curry hay, curry something, and it was okay, but you could see over time it really, the weather it really did some, you know, it didn't really, it started coming apart, and it lasted, it was a 2016, and it lasted um, probably six or seven years. This one looks pretty good. I, I like it. Like I said, it's a, uh, it's a Retrax MX, this one. And uh, I like how it fits flush. It was easy to install. It, uh, I let the gate down. And um, it, it just clamps in there. A couple clamps. It was pretty good. You kind of measure it across. I got the little drain hoses going out, those little rubber things. If I And then I, um, I put the T-Track things in there. You can see those. This is this thing here. And then uh, keep them in there. And then it's, this is a... Uh, Spraying bed liner, so it's that's working good so far. Hold stuff real well. This stuff don't slide on it. I had a basically, um, I had the uh, what I have in here. I had oh, I bought a dog wash for the dog, uh, a tub, <laughs> and installed it. I probably should have filmed that. That's kind of interesting. It's kind of a neat device. I'll probably get a little video on that, but uh, I'm, I haven't used it yet. But I got it all set up. It took me a little bit to rig up the drain. I'll show you a little video on that, but um and it didn't move what i liked is the this uh rental liner really is grippy if you want to slide stuff out it's kind of a pain but at least i think it works well you know for what it is and then this beast so far is driving nice riding nice of course it, you know it's a brand new truck i don't you know it's supposed to do that <laughs> hopefully especially what you pay for it i paid one hundred and five thousand with a five thousand markup i think i said that in an earlier video because i did have some comments people say how much did it cost and people generally know what these things cost. The Tremor package is a $5,000 upgrade. Um, and it does, you know, it gives you a, a cutoff balance, gives you a crawl gear, I think I'd said that before, 35s. And it has a uh, front and rear lift. There's blocks up under here on top of the, on the springs that raise the back, and then there's a two inch block that raises the front, and that's to accommodate these 35s. But one thing that's significant with these, and I don't know if I pointed out in any of the other videos, this runs a 275, 350 axle, even though it's a 250, and it runs this extra uh, load spring and these four springs. I might have said that before in a video, but just to say, so you do for that, with that Tremor package, you get these Raptor boards, and you get um, auto lock and lockable hubs. I think you get that on all the 250s anyway. But what was kind of neat is these shocks are... They say tremor on them. There's stickers on them where they say tremor, and those shocks are uh, are off-road shocks, and that was kind of neat. I think these didn't pay attention, but I think those hooks are a little bit different. They may not be. I didn't see them sticking out as much on other F-250s, but then this valance, they got their own valance for this. It doesn't stick down as far. It's thicker. I noticed, and it's got this fog light set up. That's a little bit. This bumper seems a little. Little different, little different than than the uh, uh, the normal 250s. So it, yeah, that may not be anything, you know, that's too uh, different. It may be just me thinking it is. And you get a sticker, and then uh, inside it really doesn't show anything tremor. The Super Duties. What was neat is they came with a uh, this little thing. I thought was kind of cool, and they had tape over it, and you. You peeled the tape off. It said Super Duty. That was kind of neat little, neat little things. You know, I'd showed you the inside before. 
um, trying to keep it as clean and nice and but I have used it I've done some a little bit of towing with it and did, did some moving things around and it it's it's a beast it does its job that's what it's designed to do I really probably in my world if there was something <laughs> Something in between an F-150 and an F-250, it probably would have suited me a little better. But I do get heavy equipment sometimes, like a bucket loader's um, small dozers, mini X's, that I would uh, that this would come in handy for. I, I, and then again, as you use these things, you find more uses. It's kind of like if you build it, they will come type thing. The other thing I'm going to add, haven't got it yet. Just I keep forgetting to order it, but uh, I'm going to remove this license plate and put a 12,000 pound factory winch in there. They got a real cool one Warren makes that goes right in there, uh, 2,500 bucks or so. I'll throw that in there and then it, this thing will be mission capable. The biggest thing with these things, with anything that I do, um, like my Broncos or my shop or everything that I kind of work on, I try to make it very durable. It's like using stone and brick, big heavy duty vehicles, off-road vehicles, four-wheelers. This trailer, uh, I use it, built, not built it, bought it. This one, I usually build these things. I build my own car haulers. I built that other trailer back there. I got some stuff I gotta take to the dump. But then, um, um, I kinda, I had to have a trailer quickly, so I grabbed this one. It's okay so far. I added that block, box on it. I took it out to uh, Moab and up in the mountains a few times, towing these Broncos. Mostly because I just I needed the extra vehicles and stuff because usually this Bronco that's in here now um, The 74 I can drive it two or three hundred miles one way Pretty good. It's got 350 gears. It's not bad. This one won't be long It won't be able to drive this much on the highway It'll have 410 gears and be a little bit more around town, but uh, a trail trail a little bit more trail uh, capable, but uh, towing these on this trailer has been good. I was looking at a, the other day, looking at a Diamond C. I was thinking of switching over to that with a metal floor. I'm gonna paint this floor again. I try to keep everything as nice as possible. And that's that's a battle, as you guys know. This thing's holding up real well, four-wheeler. I did a video on it. But actually, it's funny, I used the winch. I was actually pulling wire, running wire to this fence and put outlets down through there for Christmas lights and for the cameras, because there was an extension cord laying on the ground from the previous owner. And I was actually pulling cable through conduit with the winch on this four-wheeler. I should have filmed it, it was pretty neat. The electricians were impressed. And uh, this little dude, it pulled 30, 40 feet of cable through a pipe like nothing. They, they got a big kick out of it because it took two or three of them, they were trying to pull the cable. They, I, I think they didn't have a big enough conduit, but I don't think it hurt the cable. But so we wrapped it, we hooked the winch to it and it pulled it right through there like nothing. Didn't even squat the vehicle. And then, uh, but yeah, it, um, just a little quick, you know, I'd done a video earlier overview of some of the projects we've been working on around the house, but I realized I hadn't done an update on this. The battery maintainer that I installed in the previous video is working really well. Like I said, it's got two batteries, two alternators, pretty crazy. And uh, that's keeping the batteries up. Um, they're big batteries, so I don't want to have to replace them. I put, like I think I said in other videos, I put a battery maintainer on everything. I think on this one, this probably other than the front winch is how I'll leave this vehicle. So what you see here, guys, is pretty much the complete package. When I do the winch, I'll do a little video on installing it. I'm trying to get better with the install videos and some of the maintenance videos. And when I do these builds, when I start working back on that 56 up there and putting this coyote motor in it over here, when I start doing that, I'm going to document that. But I've got to move some of this wood. I cut, cut it all up and reduced it into a neat pile and I've got to move it over into the other house in the basement there. I've got a, like I call it a garden garage that I keep the wood in. And then I'm going to move this 66 out, put those tires on it, put a Dana 44 I got laying underneath it on it. And cause that's a Dana 30. I don't, I do really have the 44. It's got a nine inch rear end. And then I got a bunch of parts inside. I might've showed you guys that before, but I got parts inside that the lift, the suspension, um, a lot of stuff, ring and pinions, um, all this is kind of junky. I'm getting ready to, when I move this out, I'll, I'll document that and show you guys what this is. It's an early 66, um, first, first year, first gen, generation Bronco. 
and it's got a 302, 70, 1973 302 in it. It came from the factory with a six cylinder three speed on the column. Kind of wish they'd left it in there because I'd have built it back into a, an original, more of an original vehicle if it had a numbers matching engine. But more than likely, it's going to end up with this 96 302 in it. 700 r4 i think i'd said in earlier videos that i got up there i may do an adapter and put it in this because it's brand new tranny and that 327 up there i'll just sit side on a stand because later i want to build a 32 high boy but um the um yeah i'll document this it's going to have trail doors on it and stuff like that I, i'd showed you that before but i got to get get moving on that and then i got brand new fenders brand new engine mounts here for that coyote motor and uh, everything's new but the cab. And I got, uh, and the doors. And then, but I got new fenders, new hood. Um, it's got new running boards, brand new bed, the 56. And I'll dig this down and show you guys that, uh, a real good uh, overview of that, because it's kind of neat. You can buy all these parts for this thing, except for the cab. You can buy the cab new in fiberglass, but not in metal. And it's got a roll pan, put a 22 gallon Mustang gas tank in it. There's a handle on the inside of that lift gate, I mean on that, you know, that back tailgate, and it flops down like a modern vehicle. And then smooth, smooth on the back. And I'm still debating, I'm gonna probably run a front chrome bumper, but I might smooth the front. I did that on my other 56, and it looks more hot roddy, you know, but I'll, I'll see about that because the back's gonna be smooth. So I'll see, I'm still debating that. It's really easy to uh, shave the front, so. and But when I get on that, you guys, I'll document that. That's kind of neat. I've done patch panels on it down here and a rocker panel right there. You can see where I've re replaced that with new metal and replaced this up to this point with new metal and then uh, uh, sealed in the seams on the back of the cab and this still has a seam. I don't know if I'll do that, but I shaved the drip rails and uh, and then the dash is all shaved. And then there's a there was a grill work over here on the other side and that's been shaved. I might've shown you guys this, so bear with me, but uh, yeah, this has got to be dug out and I got to get the coyote in it and I got to get it going. The I got to get these 35s on this 66, but once I do that, I won't be able to put it back under here. So I'm thinking of putting my motorcycles here and uh, and then getting this up on on the three three inch lift suspension and body lift three inch body three inch suspension so it'll be a six inch lift total and then i'll park it back back there because it won't be able to go back under here and i'll have this cab and the, the bikes back here i just got to get it organized it's it's not really a, a big issue but i got to get it organized and in the shop i've been cleaning and organizing and doing a ton of other things so i got to get the shop dialed in more opened it up more because i brought stuff over from mississippi this beast here i'm getting ready to install a uh, a new battery maintainer the other maintainer's not working for some reason it's actually draining the battery which is weird and i got to get this ready because uh supercell east is coming in april and then i want to go to moab again this year and out wheeling in colorado so i'm probably going to put a uh a fresh motor in it with I think I showed it before, that fuel injection system, that Edelbrock ProFlow. So yeah, there's a lot of stuff I'm, I got in the works here, but there's been a lot of ton of property maintenance I've been doing. Um, like I say, they're painting the fence uh, all the way around the property. They're back here um, going, they're doing pretty good in between the rain and stuff. And uh, it's looking pretty good. Again, I filmed these to show you guys, but also to document it for myself because they're painting inside and outside. I probably didn't need a split rail fence around this property, um, but it was here. Um, neighbors are real nice. This part back here where she's painting is, uh, horses are in there, so it does need it back there, but anywhere else, it doesn't need it. The neighbor up there has put in a ton of new split rail. Um, so it all ties in, makes it kind of nice. Gives you, kind of defines your perimeter of your property. It's about four acres. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. I'll wrap this one up. I want to I do want to show more maintenance-related stuff. You know, forgive me if these some of these a little long-winded. Try to just keep everybody up to date on the projects and what I'm doing and some of this stuff because I do get asked 
different people. Some people that uh, watch these videos or I work with and interact with and his family members and stuff. And they ask me questions, so I try to keep them up to date because nowadays everybody's so busy, it's hard for them to travel and see you and come visit. So anyways, thanks for watching, you guys. See you later. Bye.